Due to its warm weather, inviting culture, and good internet connectivity, remote work in Costa Rica is thriving. The new Nomad Digital Visa now available in Costa Rica has changed the digital nomad lifestyle in Costa Rica. The digital visa has made it easy for freelancers, remote workers, and business people to travel and stay in Costa Rica. Fortunately, I have been able to live and work in Costa Rica as a digital nomad. There are so many towns where you can live and work comfortably. I highlight 20 popular beach towns with digital nomads in this video and why. 20 of the best beach towns in Costa Rica for digital nomads. Reliable digital infrastructure has made Costa Rica one of the countries with Central America's most reliable internet connectivity. In this Costa Rica digital nomad guide, I highlight the best beach towns and their internet connectivity, activities, accommodation, and entertainment. Santa Teresa. It is the most popular beach town for most digital nomads visiting Costa Rica. The beach town is in the Nicoya Peninsula region. Hence, many co-working spaces cater to the many digital nomads in town. There are many networking opportunities because of the large number of digital nomads. Many activities, such as surfing and going to the beach, are available to digital nomads. Accommodation facilities, such as hostels and hotels, are also available. The average internet speed of most internet providers is 37 megabits per second. However, getting around without a car can be challenging. Social amenities like hospitals and international airports are not easily accessible. Samara. Samara, considered one of the safest beach towns in Costa Rica, is one of the districts in Guanacaste province. It's a small town with a horse-shaped beach. Samara boasts high internet connectivity from several service providers. You'll have something to do to relax in Samara. Scuba diving, paddleboarding, snorkeling, wildlife adventures, horseback riding, and hiking are some of the adventures that can keep you busy. Samara has a welcoming local community, you'll feel at home alone. Short-term rentals, resorts, hotels, hostels, and apartments are available. Samara offers a lot of co-working spaces. However, you should first inquire about the internet speeds. Coco. It is a little beach town a few miles from Liberia, in Guanacaste province. Coco is one of the few dark sand beach towns in Costa Rica and is famous for its sunsets. There are a lot of fun activities in Coco, such as swimming, surfing, fishing, snorkeling, and scuba diving. Coco has a lot of co-working spaces, and most cafes and restaurants offer free Wi-Fi. The internet is reliable but can suffer from disruptions due to power surges. You can also get internet from several local service providers. Accommodations for short-term rentals are readily available since it is a famous beach town for tourists. You can get accommodations for as little as $500 and up to $1,500 for a three-bedroom. Hermosa. It is a warm, sunny beach town with white, sandy beaches. Hermosa offers plenty of activities, such as surfing, ziplining, paddleboarding, boat tours, or visiting the local coffee farms. You'll love the friendly and welcoming digital community in Hermosa. Accommodation in Hermosa is available in plenty and cheaper. There are plenty of Airbnbs and apartments to rent. Hermosa has a reliable internet connection, and most co-working spaces and cafes have stable connections. Puerto Viejo. Located an hour's drive from Limón, Puerto Viejo is not easily accessible and has escaped the attention of most visitors to Costa Rica. A friend recommended this town to me when I decided to try out digital nomadism for a while. I found a lot of co-working spaces and cafes in town. The internet is reliable, though power surges that last a few hours are standard. However, you can get portable Wi-Fi for such times. Accommodation varies, but you can stay in many hotels and hostels. Alternatively, if you want to stay in Costa Rica for a few months, you can choose the more upmarket luxury resorts or bungalows. First, you should confirm the location, as some accommodation options are in the rainforest. Puerto Viejo has many activities you can enjoy when you want to take a break from work. Visit the beautiful volcanic beaches, see exotic wildlife, and participate in surfing, paddleboarding, ziplining, and hiking. Dominical. Dominical is commonly known as a hippie surf town in Costa Baena, South America. There are a lot of activities, such as surfing, snorkeling, paddleboarding, hiking, and visiting the beach and national parks. However, there needs to be more nightlife in Dominical. Hostels, hotels, vacation rentals, luxury mansions, houses, and lodges are some of the accommodation options in Dominical. You can also find some rustic cabins at Hacienda Baru. But are hostels safe in Costa Rica? 
reliable internet is highly available in Dominica. There are quite a few co-working spaces and cafes with free Wi-Fi. Tamarindo. In Santa Cruz's district, Tamarindo is the most developed beach town in Costa Rica. It attracts younger digital nomads due to various surfing spots and available hostels. Interestingly, there are fewer locals in Tamarindo than foreigners. I lived in this small town for weeks and found their internet reliable. The availability of co-working spaces and internet cafes makes Tamarindo a favorite with digital nomads. Accommodations are plentiful and cheaper than in most towns in Costa Rica. You can quickly get a two-bedroom apartment for $950 per month. There are a lot of well-furnished apartments and condos. You can choose to rent one of the many villas facing the ocean. Main activities in Tamarindo include surfing, fishing, snorkeling, paddleboarding, hiking, horseback riding, and visiting national parks. You can also visit La Leona Waterfall. If you prefer the nightlife, Tamarindo has numerous bars, restaurants, and live music venues. Nisara. Popular as a digital nomad destination, Nisara is a small town near San Jose. Most people in Costa Rica consider it a secluded paradise. Surfing and yoga are its primary activities. Nisara has an exciting nightlife, with bars and cafes open until late at night. While Nisara is one of the most expensive towns to live in, it's still cheaper than most cities. You can stay at a hotel while looking for long-term rentals. Due to its popularity among tourists, expats, and digital nomads, finding decent accommodation in Nasara is hard. Because of the reliable internet connection, Nasara is a favorite for digital nomads looking for a quiet town. Most hotels and restaurants have internet connections, and you'll likely see many digital nomads working quietly. Most rental owners ensure that their houses have fast and reliable internet. Manuel Antonio The town hosts Manuel Antonio National Park and two main beaches. Manuel Antonio is near Cuepo's town in Guantarinas province. Hiking, whitewater rafting, dolphin and whale viewing, wildlife viewing, and visiting the beach are the most common activities for digital nomads. My favorite, of course, was a visit to the La Iguana chocolate farm. However, I noticed the town needs more nightlife than Manuel Antonio. There are no wild night parties, and I spend most evenings watching the sunset. I found accommodation in Manuel Antonio quite expensive with studio apartment rents up to $1,000 monthly. There are limited co-working spaces and cafes. If you plan to stay for an extended period, I recommend renting an apartment and working from there. The internet in Manuel Antonio is reliable. Most hotels have an internet connection, though it's also good to inquire first. Surprisingly, I didn't see a lot of digital nomads. Hence, you might have to travel to Quepos if you love socializing and networking with other digital nomads. Yako. As a digital nomad, I think this town is ideal if you want to live close to San Jose but have a limited budget. The town has a vibrant nightlife and is in Punta Arenas province. It is a safe town for digital nomads, though you must take standard precautions, especially at night. Many places in Yako have a reliable internet network with a download speed of 55.5 megabits per second. There are a lot of co-working spaces and accommodations that offer high-speed internet. Accommodations can be expensive because of the proximity to San Jose, but it's a very moderate town. There are a lot of activities, such as mountain biking, hiking, birdwatching, and visiting waterfalls. You can go to the theater, clubs, movies, and live theater. The beach is popular with surfing enthusiasts, friendly hotels for dining out. Cuepos. It's a small beach town at the entrance to Manuel National Park. Hence, one of the many activities in Cuepos is wildlife viewing. Its vibrant community, beautiful beaches, and green landscapes are among the many attractions for digital nomads and tourists. Life is relatively cheap in Cuepos, and you can rent a one-bedroom house for $500. Liberia. Because Liberia is a bit interior, most locals consider it a sleepy town. Hence, you should consider this beach town to escape the hustle and bustle of cities. Liberia is a small town and doesn't have a lot of distractions, which is ideal for digital nomads. Getting a mobile data plan is ideal for when the internet becomes spotty. Liberia also only has a few co-working spaces. You might have to work in hotels if you want a quiet workplace. Liberia's living costs are low, and you can get cheap but decent accommodation. La Catalinas La Catalina is an upcoming beach town in Guanacaste province, Costa Rica. You can visit the beach in the late afternoon for relaxation purposes. Alternatively, why not get lessons from scuba diving instructors in Las Catalinas?
Swimming, paddleboarding, and local festivities are some activities you can enjoy. You can stay in hotels, hostels, cabins, or Airbnbs. Kawita. If you want to experience the most remote beach town in Costa Rica as a digital nomad, Kawita is worth the visit. A few miles south of Limon, Kawita is known more as a fishing village. It is a low-cost town, and you can easily get a two-bedroom apartment for $800 monthly. The town is at the entrance of Kawita National Park. The internet is reliable in Kawita, and most cafes have it. Wi-Fi is accessible in most public places, such as restaurants. Skype is the cheapest way to make international calls from Kawita, and reliable and fast internet makes this possible. There are few co-working spaces in Kawita, and the best place to work might be your hotel room or short-term rental. Uvita. It is a famous town for digital nomads due to its white, sandy beaches. A mix of expats, digital nomads, and locals form a close-knit community. The cost of living is lower as only a few people have discovered this beautiful town. Getting a place to live is as cheap as $500. Most public places, cafes, and hotels have an internet connection, and you can work anywhere in town. Alternatively, you can join co-working spaces and network with other digital nomads. You can visit Arenal Volcano, go surfing, and visit Marino Baena National Park. Uvita has a lot of entertainment spots and a vibrant nightlife. Zancudo. Known more for sport fishing, Zancudo is a small town near Golfito. There are several exciting activities in Zancudo for digital nomads, such as swimming, snorkeling, kayaking, horseback riding, and hiking. You can get cheap accommodation in cabins, beach houses, bungalows, and Airbnbs. The owners of most of the accommodations have installed Wi-Fi. The internet connection in Zancudo is reliable, though co-working still needs to be available. Tadagero. The beach town of Tadagero is in the northern part of Limon. It's part of Tadagero National Park. Apart from visiting the national park, other exciting activities include kayaking, learning about turtles, hiking, bird watching tours, and visiting the beach. Nightlife in Tadagero does not include club dancing, as most people would instead explore the jungle on night tours. Accommodation in Tadagero might be challenging. Hotels and hostels are few. Airbnbs are also few and expensive. I recommend you stay in a lodge if you are staying longer than a few weeks. Tadagero has reliable and fast internet. Most hotels, eco-lodges, and hostels offer free Wi-Fi or computers that can access the internet. Playa Grande. The town has long, sandy beaches. Playa Grande is in Puerto del Carmen, south of Lanzarote Island. Its neighbor is Las Balas National Park, where you can spend your free time wildlife watching. You can also surf, hike, fish, and go ziplining. Accommodation can be expensive or cheap, depending on the season. During the tourist season in Costa Rica, accommodation prices go up. Hotels, Airbnbs, and hostels are the main options. Some hotels and restaurants have co-working spaces for digital nomads. Playa Grande has a reliable internet network in most of the areas. Request your host for information about internet speed before booking. Punta Uva. It's a small town near Puerto Viejo with stunning beaches and beautiful viewpoints. You will get the chance to see a lot of sloths, go kayaking, scuba diving, snorkeling, and visit Playa Punta Uva and Playa Punta Uva Arrecife Beach. You can get accommodation in small hotels, cabins, hostels, lodges, and rental houses. Internet is readily available in Punta Uva, whether you are getting free Wi-Fi in the hotels you're staying at or using the wired broadband internet. Montezuma Town Montezuma Town is on the southern tip of the Nicoya Peninsula. It has several beaches, and the water is calmer, making it ideal for swimming. Most restaurants will overlook Montezuma Beach. You can visit the Montezuma waterfalls, swim, sunbathe, or attend local festivals. The internet connection in Montezuma is highly reliable, but you might have to buy a SIM card to access a mobile data plan. There are a few hotels, hostels, and lodges where you can stay in Montezuma Town. The town has little nightlife, but plenty of beach bars and live music venues exist. But Montezuma is known as a bohemian town, so expect to meet many artists. Tips for a digital nomad in Costa Rica As a digital nomad in Costa Rica, you must know or consider certain factors. Your internet supplier is the first factor. There are several internet providers in Costa Rica. Calba is the leading internet supplier in Costa Rica. They charge $50 for 50 megabits per second monthly. Claro offers $30 for 10 megabits per second per month. 
Liberty offers $60 for 100 Mbps. Cabletica offers speeds of up to 500 Mbps. The best way to find long-term accommodation in most of the towns mentioned above is by first staying in a hotel or hostel. Some Airbnb owners can also agree to extend your stay. The primary language in Costa Rica is Spanish. In most beach towns, because of tourists, most locals can speak basic English. However, learn basic Spanish or at least know a few phrases. It's easy to get a SIM card in Costa Rica, which you'll need when applying for mobile data plans. You can join Costa Rican co-working spaces for a more stable working environment. Frequently Asked Questions 1. Does Costa Rica offer healthcare for digital nomads? Costa Rica requires one to have valid international insurance for their stay there. Fortunately, medical and healthcare facilities in Costa Rica, especially in towns, are advanced and efficient. 2. Do digital nomads pay tax in Costa Rica? Digital nomads in Costa Rica do not pay income, remittance, or import tax taxes for their work equipment. Conclusion Costa Rica is one of the countries with the most digital nomads. Its tropical climate, cheaper life, and laid-back way of life make it easier to live and work. The country has also invested a lot in the digital structure, greatly supporting the digital nomad way of life. Have you ever been to Costa Rica as a digital nomad? Do you already live there? Please share your experiences as a digital nomad in Costa Rica.